Hi everyone, my name is Rajesh and in this video we are going to have a look at data migration versus integration comparison. Now whenever people join this career in their first couple of years they often face this confusion between what exactly is the data migration and what is integration. Now as such we have covered both of these concepts in our previous videos. Like in our last video itself we have covered the data migration concept if you want to have a detailed look at it, I'm giving the link over here. Then in past couple of videos, which were specifically related to the project phases, I have also covered the integration part in brief. So again, I'm giving the link over here to one of those videos. Now in this video, my specific focus is to compare these two things so that if there is any confusion between what is data migration versus what is integration that gets eliminated. So to begin with, Whenever any ERP project starts, there is an analysis that is done during the pre-sales phase of an ERP implementation project. And that analysis is generally around the system landscape. Now, especially for the tier one ERPs like Oracle Cloud or SAP S4 HANA or Microsoft Dynamics 365, any organization that is implementing these kind of softwares would already be using a host of different wide range of softwares for different business functions. And the analysis needs to be done for all of these softwares so as to decide which of these softwares are going to be replaced by this new coming ERP versus which of these softwares are going to be continued to be used alongside these ERPs. So it is often a decision as replace versus coexist that which softwares are going to be replaced by the ERP and which softwares are going to be coexisting along with ERP. Now, why is that needed? If we have seen that ERP is kind of a software in which all the business processes can be done, then why in first place these organizations need all these different softwares to coexist along with ERP? There is a reason. The ERP is typically a backend system. Now imagine a company like Walmart. Now in any of the Walmart store on the billing counter, the system that you will typically find will not ideally be the ERP system. That is some system called point of sale system or POS system. Now ERP is not going to replace the functionality of the POS system because ERP is not meant for that. POS system has got an entirely different function. So all such systems, which have got the different functions than that of ERP are someone who are going to be coexisting along with the ERP versus there would be some smaller ERP softwares or maybe entry level ERP softwares, which would be kind of replaced by the ERP. Or maybe there are certain custom built specific software for specific function that the organization is using so far. But then with the new advanced tier one ERP coming in, some of those functions may also get merged within the ERP. And that is where some of such custom softwares can also be replaced by the ERP. So for all of these softwares that are going to be replaced by the ERP, typically the data migration would be relevant because all the data or all the open data to be specific that is there in these all softwares need to be migrated to the new ERP. So from this explanation, we can say that Data migration is primarily the one time activity, which is taken care during the implementation by the implementation service provider. However, integration is something that is more recurring in nature. That's simply because these softwares are going to be coexisting. So some data will be coming in from these softwares to the ERP or some data might be going out from ERP to these softwares on a recurring day to day basis for the entire lifetime of this ERP. And that is where integrations are recurring in nature. Now, if we look at the steps involved in both data migration and integration, then in our previous video, we have already seen that data migration has got steps like extract, extracting the data from the old software, then maybe cleanse the data because data migration is sort of a one time activity. So during that activity, you will take an opportunity to clear all the impurities that are there in the existing data. And that's where you will need to cleanse the data then transform the data in the required format of a new ERP, then load that data and then reconcile that data. So this is the five step process that is typically followed in the data migration. Integrations are going to be relatively simple in terms of the number of process steps. They are typically called ETL, extract, transform and load. 
which means the data needs to be extracted from the source system. It needs to be transformed in the format required by the other system and it needs to be loaded in the other system. So that are typically the steps involved in the integration. Now, if we look at the approaches that are considered in the integrations, there could be two types of integrations, one batch mode and another real time. What's the difference? Let's take an example of this Walmart. Suppose that you are a customer at Walmart. You go to the checkout counter and the checkout clerk enters all your purchase details and then generates the bill for you. Now, if the Walmart wants that the time at which the bill is generated in their point of sale system, that information needs to be getting recorded in the ERP immediately, then it is called real time integration. And to build such kind of real time integrations, typically APIs are used. Other integration can be the batch mode. For example, again, in this Walmart store, let's say in a day, 1000 customers or 10,000 customers walk in and their bills are generated for different purchases. Now, Walmart's management wants that all of this data of all the sales that have been made or effected in one day should be transferred to their ERP at the end of the day or maybe like on the next day. Now, first of all, why in first place this sales data needs to get transferred to the ERP? It is simply because ERP is going to be the single source of truth. So the financial statements is something that are going to be printed or that are going to be prepared in the ERP software. So all the data related to the sales, purchase and all other functions of the business ultimately needs to go to the ERP system. Now, as I said, it can have the API approach or the real time integration or it can be the batch mode integration. If at all it is done using the batch mode, then typically something called file based loaders are used, which are something similar to the APIs. However, they are more like a bulk loader. So it is something like an Excel file in which all of the data of all the sales affected during one day is getting accumulated. And then that Excel is sort of getting loaded on the ERP system. However, all of these things, whether it is an API based integration or a file based loader based integration, ideally speaking, both these integrations need to happen automatically. Why? Because it's a recurring process. So every day or maybe like every hour or every four hours or every five hours, this process is going to take place. So obviously it cannot have much of the manual intervention. Manual intervention can still be there, but it will be just for the error handling. For example, like if there is any error in any of these integration run, then maybe on the ERP end, there will be someone who can look into that error, who can solve that error and maybe who can reprocess such data, which has got into the error. But otherwise, ideally during the integrations, there will not be any manual intervention. So the job of ERP implementer companies or the system integrators is to identify all such requirements and to build integrations between these third party systems and the ERP systems. Now, again, integrations can be inbound as well as outbound. For example, the data may come into the ERP system from any of these third party systems like point of sale system or any other system, which is by the way called the inbound integrations or the data might be extracted from the ERP and loaded or transferred to any other system. For example, the payment file integration with the bank system. Now, typically every day when an organization will be processing the payments that are to be made to their vendors, they will ideally generate one payment file and transfer that payment file to the bank server in order to process that. Now for this, they might establish the integration between the ERP system and the bank server. Now this is typically an outbound integration wherein the data is going out from ERP to this third party system, which is that of bank system. So the integration can be inbound or outbound. On the other hand, data migration is typically always inbound. I hope all these pointers give you the fair idea about what is exactly the difference between the data migration and the integration. Thank you everyone for watching this video. With the advent of cloud, the ERP solutions are becoming more and more affordable. And that's where even the small and mid scale organizations are increasingly opting for ERP softwares. What it means for us is ERP consulting as a career option is now more lucrative than ever. So if you are a fresher finance, commerce and management graduate and want to build your career in the ERP consulting industry, then go visit www.yourerpcoach.com and hit that inquire button right now.